Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am back with a review of the Behringer C2s, which are so affordable that I don't understand how Behringer can do it, and I don't think I want to understand how they can do it. For a set of these microphones, it will cost you around $60. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. For this review, I am running the microphones directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, gain set at around 3 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so make sure to check the doobly-doo or the lower third to see what a diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, you're going to get a hard shell carrying case. You will get two C2 microphones, two cute little foam windscreens that go on those microphones, two microphone clips which have both 5 8 and 3 8 inch threading. You'll get a stereo bar and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality of these mics, I really don't have any complaints. It has an all metal chassis as well as a metal mesh grill on the end which doesn't have any give to it. On the side, we have a switch to engage a high pass filter or a negative 10 decibel pad, but not both at the same time. On the rear of the microphones, you will find the XLR port, and if it matters to you, these microphones are made in China. Then as far as the specs, the microphones list a polar pattern of cardioid, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around minus 41 dB, a self noise of 19 dBA, a max SPL of 140 dB, or 150 dB with the pad engaged, an impedance of 75 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Yes, I have been doing this for over six years, and the high-pass filter was on for that entire introduction. You would think I would be good at this by now, but no. I still sometimes forget to double-check that we are in neutral mode. I will note that in the lower third in the intro. I'm embarrassed. I am embarrassed. Please forgive me. I am begging for your forgiveness. Let's get on with the review. Now I am spinning around the C2 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Y'all better get ready because this is going to be bad. Now let's test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Yikes. <laughs> Please bring pizza pronto. <laughs> Please bring pizza pronto. Stop it. <laughs> now I am right on top of the microphone and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about six inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the C2, about two feet away from the Behringer C2, and finally I am about four feet away from the Behringer C2. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am clickety clacking on the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated space about six inches away from my mouth. Now here is how the microphone sounds being underboomed about nine inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. Now I'm about nine inches away from the microphone with it being underboomed in an untreated space. And here is how the microphone sounds being overhead boomed about 10 inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And now I'm about 10 inches away from the microphone with it being overhead boomed in a completely untreated room. All right, we are six inches away again. What is the next test? Desk bump slash boom arm test. Now, in order to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shocks, I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm.
we actually do not want the windscreen on for this. Next, because I am an incredibly deeply annoying person, I am going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Resonant frequencies. Now I want to see if the provided foam windscreen has a big impact in the sound of the microphone. So right now I am six inches away from the mic without the provided foam windscreen and here is how it's sounding. And here is how the microphone sounds in neutral mode with the foam windscreen. Do you hear a difference? If so, what do you hear? Let me know in the comments down below. And just for good measure, here is another sample of the microphone six inches away without the provided foam windscreen. And for comparison's sake, here is another sample of the microphone with the foam windscreen installed. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it's sounding in neutral mode and yes, it is in neutral mode, I double checked. And now I have engaged the high pass filter on the microphone, I am the same distance away and here is how it sounds. Make sure to listen to the lower frequencies to hear how much of that muddiness it clears up. There you go. Next, I want to see how the pad on the microphone is initiated, so I will go ahead and switch that on. And now the negative 10 dB pad is on. It is immediate. Let me go ahead and switch it off. And we are back up to that regular level, so there is no gradual attenuation or rollback of the attenuation. That pad is immediate, and you get that loud popping. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that I'm reviewing and a handful of other microphones so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear this thing outside of a vacuum. And I think we have a pretty solid lineup of competitors today. Starting on the mic that I'm reviewing, this is the Behringer C2, neutral mode, six inches away, gain set at three o'clock, and here's how it sounds. First up, we have the Samson C02s. These go for $100 for a set, so $50 per microphone against the $30 per microphone for the Behringers, three inches, six inches off, Gain still set at 3 o'clock, and that's how it sounds. Let's do a bunch more. Back again on the Behringer C2s. Here is how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone. Next, I am on the Rode M5s. These go for $200 for the set, so $100 per microphone. Six inches off. Gain still set at 3 o'clock, and here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that is $70 cheaper. Let's go back to the C2. Back for another palette cleanser. This is the Behringer C2 neutral mode. Nothing has changed. Check the lower third and let's go to another microphone. Next, I am on the SE Electronics SE7. These go for $220 for a matched pair, so $110 per microphone. Six inches off, gain still set at three o'clock. Check the lower third and let's go back to the Behringer C2. All right, we have another palette cleanser for you to wipe your ears out with. This is the Behringer C2. That's it. Let's do another one. Next, I am on the Shure SM81. These cost $800 for a pair or $400 for a single microphone. Neutral mode, six inches off, gain still set at three o'clock. Check the lower third because I will have to boost this a bit more in post, but here is how this sounds. More than 10 times the cost. Does it sound 10 times better? Let's go back to the C2 and do a handful more. We are quickly coming up to the end, but here is another palette cleanser, C2, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to another mic. Now I am on the Bayer Dynamic MC930. These cost $1,200 for a pair or $600 each. I have the microphone in neutral mode, three inches off. Gain drop to one o'clock because this is a hot one. And here is how this sounds compared to the Behringer C2. What do you think? Let's go back and do two more comparisons. I think we are already at the penultimate microphone, but I may be wrong. Here is the Behringer C2. Let's hear that second to last microphone. Now I am on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. KM185, this goes for $1,600 for a matched pair or $900 individually. Six inches off, gain back up at three o'clock. And here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that cost $30. <laughs> Just that price differential. Yes, this sounds incredible, but 
That's a big difference. Okay, that's the KM185. Let's go back and do one last comparison. If that was the second to last microphone, this must mean the following microphone will be the final microphone. So this is the final palate cleanser, the final Behringer C2 comparison. Let's go to that last microphone. I hope you can read the screen on my calculator. It says 123.33. Because now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This microphone costs $3,700. That means this microphone is 123.33 times more expensive than the Behringer C2. Make of that information and do with that information what you will. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filter, 6 inches off, gain set at noon, 12 o'clock, and why am I assigning a day or night indicator to the... You get the point. Okay, let's go to the music test. I'll come abduct the human race As tears are streaming down your face It doesn't bother me at all So I'm still plotting your downfall Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. This really shouldn't be any surprise to you. I have been broadcasting it for years. If you didn't take it seriously, that's on you. Don't forget your towel, 42, and don't panic. Don't panic. Let's get on with the conclusion of this video. After about 13 minutes of video, I can still say with absolute sincerity I have zero desire to understand how Behringer has made these microphones so cheap. So let's go ahead and talk about the pros. And number one, they are incredibly affordable. Number two, the microphone did a fairly good job at shock rejection. Number three, they are incredibly small and easy to position. Number four, the accessories don't feel great but they are nice to haves and they are functional, mainly the stereo bar. I think the inclusion of a stereo bar at this price is just a great entry point to stereo miking. It's going to be really fun for somebody just getting into this. And did I mention they're really affordable? And the last pro, they're affordable. But then we get to cons. And the switch on this microphone was a very weird choice because it allows you to have the high pass filter or the pad. You cannot have both. Secondly, the microphone is probably the worst I have ever heard with plosives. But with an SDC, you shouldn't be expecting good plosive rejection. Use a pop filter, use a windscreen, use all the wind protection that's available. And the final con for me is the treble region of this microphone. I find it to sound a bit artificial and a little bit harsh and sibilant. It's just not a great sounding treble region. But now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Behringer C2s? On the electric guitar, I'm surprised to say that I kind of dug it. Yes, it is a bit muddy and unclear in the bass and low mids, especially if you are close miking this speaker. If you aren't limited by the isolation cabinet, I would say back it off of the microphone or use the high pass filter. In the upper mids, it is relatively neutral. 
It doesn't have that same boost that we hear on a lot of dynamics used on electric guitar. And then in the treble, it is a bit sizzly, a bit harsh, a bit aggressive sounding. I think it works quite nicely on aggressive electric guitar. Then on the acoustic guitar, in a stereo set, I thought it sounded great, but I think any stereo mic on an acoustic guitar sounds phenomenal, so don't take my word for that. I do think we still have the issue of a bit of muddiness in the bass and low mids. The upper mids, perfectly fine, nothing horrible, nothing offensive there. The treble, a bit artificial, but then the upper frequencies as a whole don't come across as exciting or open, and it doesn't sound natural. So because of that, it is not my favorite for this application. Does it work? Sure. Am I going to be reaching for it? No. Next up for singing, that is my least favorite application for this microphone, and it all comes down to the treble frequencies. In the treble region of this microphone, the boost just doesn't sound good. It comes across harsh, it comes across artificial, it comes across a bit sibilant, and I don't think it lends itself to this application. It makes me question my love for every single small diaphragm condenser that I have ever tested out where I said, why don't people use it for singing in spoken word. Well, they don't use it for singing because <laughs> some of them sound like this. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. I just don't like it for this application at all. And finally, for spoken word, I think this microphone sounds surprisingly good. Dot, dot, dot. Not even just for the price. I think it sounds fine. The bass and low mids are not overpowering, especially if you use the microphone at a distance overhead or under booming. The upper mids on this thing are relatively natural sounding and pretty open. I think it sounds quite nice. And then in the treble, yes, it is still unnatural. Yes, it is still a bit sibilant. Yes, it is a bit harsh. The foam windscreen does a bit to help with that by attenuating it. You are going to have to work with that if you want to get it to sound great. But for the price, I think it sounds pretty darn good. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Behringer C2 Stereo Microphone Kit? Yes, I would. Do I think the C2s are the greatest sounding microphones that have ever been made? No. Do I think there are better sounding microphones out there? Absolutely. Do I think the C2s are a bit harsh and a bit unnatural? Yes, I do. But for $30 per microphone, the sound we get out of these things is surprising. It is surprising that we are able to get sound this good for $30 a microphone, probably less because, well, I guess the other stuff probably cost around a nickel to produce, but surprisingly good. So if you're just getting started and you're looking for a couple of small diaphragm condensers to play around with, I think these are a really nice option, especially because they included the stereo bar. Not a good stereo bar, but a stereo bar. And that will allow you to get a couple of stereo miking techniques under your belt very easily and get a bit of practice with stereo miking before you upgrade to some higher end SDCs. That is all that I have for you today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, give me a thumbs up, hated it, big old thumb down. Beneath me, there is a video. YouTube thinks that video is perfect for you. You should click on it and watch it. Click on it and watch it. Those people are amazing. They support the channel and I will talk to you in a week or so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I love you from the bottom of my heart to the cockles of my brain. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boop.